So let's talk through some possibly dodgy guard codex rumours that are claiming to spoil some new models and rules from the upcoming book. Loads of reasons to take these with a heap of salt, but interesting enough to talk through for entertainment. Let's take a look at what we've got. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought it would be interesting to take a look at some admittedly very dodgy guard leaks. Given that it does seem to be a rumour that's reached a fair amount of traction, quite a lot of people talking about it, big reddit threads about them, and a few people sending them in to me. Let's talk through a few of the points, and maybe a few of the reasons why I'm a bit suspect of these ones, but still interesting enough to take a look over for entertainment value, particularly with the Astra Militarum wanting a few other ways to play with a Codex in 10th. As best I can tell, these rumours were initially covered by Mordian Glory's YouTube channel, I'm sure many of you are well aware of him as a thoroughly excellent guard content creator. If you play the Astra Militarum, you're probably already subscribed to him, but if not, you probably should be, and I'll leave a link down to his channel in the video description. I believe in his video around about 24 hours or so ago, he stated that he'd be fine for other creators to talk about it, so I thought it would be interesting enough to have a read through and give a few of my own takes. Always exciting to have some potential new details on an upcoming book. I did see in a couple of places where this was discussed, some people claiming that it might have come from 4chan prior to release there, though I really have no idea about that myself. I certainly couldn't find the original myself, though it could be my searching letting me down there. In any case though, always glad to give Mordian and Glory a shout out, and I'll leave a link to his video and channel down in the video description. In any case, as getting onto the leak itself, as Mr Mordian and Glory said himself, there's a very good chance that this is all just completely made up. The source is basically a trust me bro source. So no evidence or proof or anything like that, reportedly trying to say that they got the information via Games Workshop's printing things, which I guess is maybe trying to piggyback off those leaked pictures that we saw for the Age of Sigmar book and the Agents of the Imperium possible codex. If that is right, it maybe seems a little bit weird really. They were picture leaks and this would be a text leak. And wherever I've seen this discussed, it does look like the internet reaction is very, very sceptical as to whether or not this is just a wish list. A few things really do stick out as perhaps particularly unlikely to me, some of them big and some of them small. Though for the most part, I feel like the majority of the rules that are proposed here do seem pretty much in line with how Games Workshop might do things, using common 10th edition rules from other armies, reinterpreting old names from previous codexes, which is definitely something that they do and a mix of stuff that seems kind of interesting with stuff that seems kind of bland, which definitely isn't out of keeping with Games Workshop codexes. Between all this, I would treat this as probably fake, though I still think it interesting enough to talk through just for the proposed rules, and maybe have a lens for what we might really want out of a codex for the Guard in 10th edition. I'll even give that a full slide just to underline the point. These are still absolutely rumours until we see anything to confirm them. My guess is that they probably will turn out not to be true, so treat this as entertainment as opposed to getting stressed in any way, one way or the other, as to whether or not they turn out to be right. Having said a whole bunch of caveats though, let's jump into it. Getting into the meat of the things, the first claim is that the Guard Codex is going to be coming out in late summer, which I guess, as per Games Workshop's Codex roadmap, is still technically possible. There's still one in summer that's unrevealed at the moment, and given Games Workshop's fairly flexible release dates that they often do change a little bit nearer the time, it's always possible that late summer could be early autumn by GW purposes. Over the last six months or so, since the start of 10th edition, we really have had quite a lot of rumour engine teasers of things that look very likely to be Astra Militarum related. Here's a good collection of them, though there's a few more that are possible. The two with the sandbags I think look really quite likely to be guard, maybe some sort of big scenic base, potentially for a gun emplacement, or maybe for a character. It also looks like there's an interesting sort of rocket launcher, a barbed wire minefield sign that looks like it might be from the same base as those sandbags potentially, and the corner of a guard standard. We do know that the Astra Militarum Codex is coming in 10th edition at some point, whether it's sooner or later, and it does look like from these clues that they are getting a major model release. I feel like we've seen so many rumours that it's not going to be a small one character release or anything like that, and there is likely to be a second wave of guard miniatures coming. To this end, the biggest calls that the rumour makes are all these new miniatures for the guard, a lot of which feel focused on reimagining Forge World type miniatures into plastic, particularly focusing on the now out of print Elysians and the Death Core. Death Core have been heavily rumoured already, so I guess it would fit with that, though the leak could certainly be based on those rumours. They say here that they're getting a marshal, a unit of Krieg, either engineers or pioneers. Engineers, I guess, the guys with the gas bombs. I believe pioneers are tasked with subterranean warfare as well. They are a previous thing for the law, though I'm not sure that makes it any more likely. The other thing they rumour is a Krieg siege battery. 
This one does almost sound it's not so very different from the Field Ordnance Battery for the Cadians, but Krieg themed. This one has the option of either an Earth Shaker gun or a heavy mortar gun, apparently. Comes in squad size of between two or four models, which sounds maybe a bit odd to me if the Field Ordnance are locked to two. And apparently gets a slow units rule like the Basilisk. To be fair, I really wouldn't be too surprised if we got either or both of those options as a big heavy field gun at some point. I feel like it might not add crazily enormously to the range, given that we've both got the Basilisk and the Field Ordnance batteries, but I'm sure plenty of people who like the resin kits might enjoy them. The big core are Elysian drop troops, which I feel like I wouldn't be enormously surprised if they came back. They did have their own model army line at one point, after all, and we have seen previous Forge World army lines like Krieg and now Krutz get some major plastic releases. Could easily be something like a Kill Team kit. Supposedly they come in squads of 5 to 20 models, get a 3 inch drop rule like the Inceptors and move 12 inches with sort of guard jump infantry type things. It will be kind of interesting to get a fast mover unit on the board and otherwise get standard las guns and the hotshot volley gun. I feel like most of that is believable enough. Maybe the weirdest thing though is seeing a squad size of 5 to 20. That just seems very unlikely by the way that Games Workshop does 10th edition unit sizes. The vast majority of more recent unit releases tend to come in units that you can field anywhere between 1 and 3 of the copies of the kit within one squad, and 5 to 20 will break that. Next up, they claim new models for Rattlings. I guess a fairly safe bet that they'll be redone at some point. They're the other famous auxilia alongside the Ogrin and Borgrin and the Foot Ancient resin models. And they also say that the regimental advisors are being redone including the ones that you get alongside the command squad, and also mentioning a priest and an engine seer as well. According to his info from them, Mr. Mordian Glory said that they were apparently pictured in a photo altogether, so might come in the same kit. I guess it will be the option between whether or not they do get new models, or get sent to Legends as per the recent Tower Necron finecast units. The engine seer might be a weird one, unless they're trying to do one specifically for the Imperial Guard, and keep the relatively recent Abmec model for it to its own faction. Finally, and honestly, perhaps the most unusual or unlikely bit is that they say that there's a Tempestus Scion combat patrol, mentioning that that comes with a command squad, two Tempestus Scion units, a Torox Prime, and a squad of new Rattlings. I feel like perhaps out of any of the leaks and rumours, this one feels like one of the single most unlikely. In general, the combat patrols for the factions tend to be focusing on at least fairly central units for their armies. I don't think we've really seen one that goes all in on a sub-faction of the same army. And I guess if this were indeed coming from a leaked codex, then that would mean that the picture of this was in the codex, so that would be the only guard combat patrol. If that really were the case, then that would be a really strange decision to make Scions the only discount deal for the Astra Militarum, as I really don't suspect that they'd release one and the other. I know they have this start collecting Scion box set in the distant past, but that just doesn't really tend to be how they do combat patrols these days. I also feel like the feel of that would be pretty strange with Scions paired with Rattlings as well. I'm not saying that Games Workshop don't do some pretty unusual combos in combat patrol boxes, like characters that can't lead the squads that they go with, but Scions and Rattlings just don't really feel like they fit thematically together either. Finally, they mention that there's no new Yarrick, but the Codex implies that he is alive. I feel like a lot of people would really like him to return and be found out that rumours of his death were greatly exaggerated. There was the sort of obituary in the previous guard codex to him. There was kind of mixed messages there. The previous page basically declared him dead in the law as per imperial decree. Though Games Workshop's Warhammer community page for some reason decided to insinuate that it might just be all propaganda for some reason. Not 100% sure what to make of that, but I feel like he's probably less likely to come back than more likely. Overall, taken together, I feel like that wouldn't be a too bad haul for the guard. There are quite a lot of the kits that most need redoing. I feel like the Kastchan jungle fighters would be very disappointed if they weren't touched though. The old Kastchan kit was one that I was sort of expecting to get redone all the way back in 9th edition, let alone now. I think that out of these ones, probably the Scion combat patrol feels like it's the single most unlikely. Maybe the regimental advisors a little bit less likely too. Everything else at least fairly plausible for a kit release. Otherwise, the other headline news was a whole bunch of rumoured detachments. These ones not only gave the names and the themes, but also a rough breakdown of the rules. And genuinely, on the whole, not going for any weird curveballs or anything like that, it does feel like it could be a good breakdown of the way that Games Workshop could realise Guard in the Codex. There's the generic detachment in the Combined Regiment, and then different things based around different ways of fighting, an armoured regiment for tanks, one entirely focused around infantry squads, a siege regiment dedicated to supporting artillery, a mechanised regiment with transports and weirdly enough super heavies as well. 
and apparently a rapid response regimen for Scions. As it goes, I feel like that's really quite a logical breakdown of the ways to play guard and realising them per detachments. I think they are an army that does have a bunch of thematic playstyles. Would be really quite nice if we did get all of these. I do kind of wonder whether they'd actually go down the route of a regiment that buffs artillery unless they made the rules super lackluster for them. Games Workshop do seem to be sort of having a fight with indirect fire things and keep on nerfing them in their balanced data slate and things. And maybe other slightly unusual choices are things like lumping super heavies in with transports. I guess a few of those do have transport capacity, and I guess we had salamanders with transports in the Space Marine Codex, which was kind of weird. And the name of the Scion one maybe is a little bit surprising, given it seems to be solely focused around the Militarum Tempestas. I sort of would have expected it to be called something along their lines and actually have Militarum Tempestas or something in the title. They do give a bunch of breakdowns for the detachment rules. There were a scattergun list of order changes. Supposedly tank commanders and tempestors each getting two orders, which doesn't seem unreasonable. Might make a bit more sense to have one tank commander leading multiple Rosses as opposed to just commanding one each turn. Heavy weapon special rule is reportedly changing to a return fire mechanic for shooting something next to them. We did see something similar to that with Tau to be fair. The crew talks rider got a similar change there. They said that Krieg no longer get plus one to wound the enemy if they're below half strength. Wyverns gain 46 shots again. Not sure if that might come at the expense of the Twin Links keyword or something. Commissars can do a once per game duty and honour order in any phase, which will be big for doing objectives from time to time. And servitors are removed from the book, but that's basically a given anyway, and I'd be more surprised if they weren't, given that they went away for the Abmec. To my mind, none of those are enormously unbelievable. Though without the context of points, they don't necessarily mean that it's actually improvements or nerfs to any one of those units. They might just have the extra abilities or worse abilities baked into their cost. Otherwise, I'll just run through those detachment highlights quickly. Supposedly, the Armoured Regiment has their core rule for doubling objective control on vehicles, and Dawn's gaining the Squadron keyword, which they currently already have. I guess that does imply they don't have Squadron in the Codex for some reason, which would suck if you weren't able to order them as easily. They've got stratagems for minus 1 AP to debuff enemy attacks, return fire in the enemy command phase, a return to reserve 6 inches of a board edge stratagem, and a bunch of enhancements for a 5 plus fail no pain, a rogue or dawn being able to get 2 orders apparently, and dish them out to the other tanks nearby, giving a model free tank shot within 12 inches, and giving it a tank stealth. I say perhaps the single weirdest thing out of that detachment though is that generally non-characters can't take enhancements and Rogue or Dawns aren't characters, so unless they broke the convention of only characters getting enhancements then that one just wouldn't really work. To my knowledge I don't think they've done that anywhere else in 10th edition that I can recall. The infantry regiment will get the core rule for a 4 plus chance to return battle line units to strategic reserve when they're destroyed, so sort of a recycle units mechanic kind of similar to the gene stealer cult. That would be a really big deal, though maybe not enormously crazily different to the reinforcements type thing that you get from the combined regiment right now. That one does cost CP, but it does go off automatically as well. You don't have to roll. The stratagems for this one it say that they're mortal wounds on the charge for Ogrin, Borgrins, and Atelum Rough Riders. The fields of fire one from the core one. A 5 plus fail no pain save for a unit until the end of the turn, and lethal hits an extra AP versus a monster or vehicle. I do notice that these stratagems don't seem to be giving the entire complete picture here. Otherwise, the enhancements for this one are noted as a commissar can lead an order Ogryn squads, one for infiltrate, one for shoot on death for the unit, and one for a reroll hit rolls of one somehow. I guess that might be an aura. I guess it would be kind of fun to play repeated human wave guard with models coming onto the board repeatedly. It does look like they'd get a bit more focus support here, maybe than the combined regiment, and you wouldn't have to spend all of your CP on reinforcements. Next up in the supposed leak codex is the Siege Regiment. Their core rules claim to be a boost to AP if it's static for artillery. Heavy weapon team is also gaining the artillery keyword, so you guess you get that on your mortars and things. They've got stratagems for shooting an enemy when a Vox caster unit dies in melee, a reactive movement when enemies get close, and artillery units just straight up firing again. That will be a bit of an unusual one in 10th edition. We've not really seen many instances of paying command points just to do flat extra rounds or turns of damage. That really feels like an 8th or 9th edition thing. This does the enhancements are stealth, two orders for artillery keyword units, and deep strike for the bearers units, supposedly acting as sappers mining up in the enemy ranks. 
The mechanised regiment has its core rule for re-roll wound rolls on disembarking from transport vehicles and chimeras and toroxes gaining the regiment keyword so they'll be able to be ordered by infantry. That's be quite fun and it will genuinely make transport guard look pretty dangerous I think. Rerolling wound rolls is kind of what they need to have their special weapons punch up a little bit against tougher stuff. Otherwise apparently it's aimed to support super heavies a little bit. A minus one damage for bane blade chassis only. Two units re-embarking in a transport bane blade chassis unit. An auto advance of 12 inches for a dedicated transport. Devastating wounds on las guns in a unit for a turn. And fields of fire again. The enhancements are listed as scout for a unit and a nearby dedicated transport unit and a once per game return to reserves. One of the points I've seen perhaps most discussed after this whole leak is that one of the stratagems in that one was named Blitzkrieg apparently. Mr Mordian Glory in a stream it said that it might have potentially been lost in translation and it might be paraphrased for the actual name of the stratagem though it did sound like that was the recorded name for it and it just seems very unlikely that that would be the case given the World War II connotations. I feel like they wouldn't dare to call a stratagem that in a full codex release. I do remember in one of the previous guard codexes they had a stratagem called Blitz Them, which maybe isn't quite so on the nose. Finally for the supposed leaked regiments, there's the Fast Response Regiment. This one's the one that's themed around Scions. Militar and Tempestus Scion squads gain battle line as you expect and get devastating wounds within a secured area on the table, kind of similar to the Necron Cryptek Power Matrix. Regardless of whether that's true or not, I feel like that does feel kind of cool. It does feel like it'll play into their lore quite well, with their overlapping fields of fire and kill zones being the way that they make war. Among their stratagems is one for two Scion units getting stealth and cover. Returning a destroyed Scion unit to reserve, so kind of reinforcement style there I guess. One for a sticky objective rule, and one for precision shooting. There's one for a plus one to wound against vehicles and monsters, and one to return to reserves if near a Valkyrie, I guess getting grav shooted back elsewhere. For the enhancements, I guess they'd be Scion only. One gets a two plus save and a plus one wound, one a four plus fill no pain versus psyche attacks, and one for lethal hits. Overall, we'll be kind of surprised if we don't get a Scion regiment detachment in the Guard Codex. That is certainly a big sub faction and a way that plenty of people do like to try and make work. They did have their own codex at one point after all. Finally, they did also mention the Combined Regiment as well, stating that you get lethal hits on everything, not just things that are completely static, generally making the Guard a good army at punching down tougher stuff, and maybe making things like last guns a lot more impactful in-game. If that were so, that would be a return to form for the old-style Guard rules. It does maybe kind of break the wounding chart just a little bit there. It would be a ridiculous power boost compared with what it is now, basically getting us on all the units that need to move all the time. Feels maybe a little bit wishlisty for that one. I can't help but think it would probably overshadow much of the other options. In any case, I did find that interesting enough to go over. I feel like it's maybe not really worth it too much to try and drill down into which things look best or worst, given that there's a really good chance that this is all just completely fabricated anyway. I would say though, if it was just one person making it all up, they've at least put a fair amount of legwork and effort into it. It's a reasonable enough combination of safe bets, expansion on different rumours, reapplying old guard relics and enhancements and warlord traits and things to a new format, and trying to think how a 10th edition update might well apply to a bunch of other regiments if released for the guard. Barring a few bits of weirdness and a few things that are probably a bit either overtuned or undertuned, I think it genuinely would be at least fairly interesting for people if Games Workshop did come out with a codex that looked fairly similar to that. For whether it's legitimate though, I definitely have my doubts. The things that feel the weirdest to me are the rumoured Scion Combat Patrol. I just really can't see them going that way for the Guard, given they just don't have the same sort of broad appeal. Scions are fun and everything, but there's way more people who want to collect a core Astra Militarum army than start with a force of Scions, I think. Otherwise, as mentioned, Blitzkrieg as a stratagem seems very unlikely for that to be the actual name. A Rogal Dawn getting an enhancement would be breaking what they'd normally do in 10th edition enhancements. Just getting a detachment rule with unqualified lethal hits against everything all game long seems unlikely. And of everything else, again, that squad size of 5 to 20 Elysians again would be very, very weird. It's just not the way they tend to do unit sizes like that these days. I think there's plenty of other stuff that you could read as unlikely for one reason or another and could take issue with, but it could just be things that might speak of points changes or other things going on, or information that's just been badly relayed through several series of Chinese whispers. 
In any case, I'll certainly be interested enough to hear what you think about it. As I said, I don't think it would be the worst guard codex in the world if we did get something kind of similar to that. At least the majority of the rules seem somewhat interesting and thought through, maybe more so than some detachments that we've seen. As I said, I'd guess it's probably not real for the reasons listed, but until we actually see any hard evidence one way or the other, you can't really be absolute about these text leaks, they might not have at least some things on the money, even if some of it might be kind of lightly guesses. In any case, I'll be interested to hear what you have to say. What would you like to see in a guard codex for 10th edition 40k? As mentioned, if you'd like to see the actual rumours from the source, then feel free to check out Mordian Glory's video. I'll link it down in the video description. It's certainly a channel well worth checking out. Otherwise though, I'll certainly try and cover any Warhammer 40k news and rumours here on Allspets Tactics as well. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more like this. And I'll certainly look forward to reporting back on anything else heard for the guard, though hopefully with a bit more confirmation and substance. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, an automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening and I'll hope to see you guys next time.